up, everybody? Welcome to The Stack. I'm Alex. I'm Pete. And on The Stack, we talk about a bunch of books that have come out this week. Kicking it off with Black Panther, number 25 from Marvel, written by ta Coates, Daniel Acuna, and Brian Stelfreeze. Now, this is a big issue bringing to a close everything that ta Coates has been working on this entire time on Black Panther. Pete, you are our resident Black Panther fan. What'd you think about this? Well, this was awesome. Uh, also, it was nice to see Brian uh, uh, Stelfreeze come back for this, like, they kind of started the Black Panther arc together, so it was nice to see them kind of like uh, uh, finish this. Um, but yeah, I mean, do you think that Brian Stelfry has said it's time to finish this? Yes, yeah, I definitely do. Just like that, oh, um, cool. yeah. But yeah, the art's fantastic. Um, it's still a little tough uh, to read Black Panther and not think about Chadwick Boseman. Uh, rest in peace. But uh, this is a fantastic book, really well written. A lot of cool, badass uh, stuff happens in this issue. I agree. This has been an epic run. It has been, uh, it, it's included almost every aspect of the Bland Panther mythology in a really interesting and fascinating way. It's almost a companion piece to what he's doing over on Captain America in a way, where that's this own team book building around Captain America in a very similar way to we see a team building and supporting Black Panther here while it's still very much his story. Uh, but very good. I'm really interested to see what happens next. Who picks this up and how they run with it. Yeah. At Marvel, if anybody picks up these ideas because they're big and complicated and it won't be easy to do. But epic run. Next up, Mr. Miracle, The Source of Freedom, number one from DC Comics, written by Brandon Easton, art by Fico Osio. This is picking up on Future State, where we're following a new Mr. Miracle who has taken over the mantle. He is a daredevil. He's a stuntman. In this issue, he tries to go on a date. It doesn't go particularly well. And he meets a new enemy. Um, we, well, I was a big fan of the Mr. Miracle series by Tom King. This is obviously a very different take, but what did you think, Pete? Yeah, I, I think it's exciting to get more Mr. Miracle. Also, I like this take on it. Uh, it's a little bit more fun. Uh, I love the uh, mother box banter. Uh, yeah, I thought the, the uh, uh, like the art and the, uh, was really uh, a big kind of part of the, uh, the 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 hero here, the real kind of like hero. I I, I think it looks really amazing. I agree. I was very surprised how much I enjoyed this, but I think it's a nice book, well-written. There's some interesting stuff said about race as well in the book, mm -hmm. um, and this should be a fun one to watch. Next up, The Department of Truth, number nine from Image Comics, written by James Tynan IV, art by Martin Simmons. In this issue, as usual, we're delving very deeply into conspiracy theories, uh, and this time we find out one of the ways that they combat conspiracy theories uh, what'd you think, Beat? Are you still totally creeped out by this book? Yeah, this is weird as shit. Um, but <laughs> it's very creative, uh, spooky in all the right ways. The, yeah, I mean, as soon as there was a, a briefcase with the American flag on it, I had, but I think I was like, this is going to go wrong. But like, um, I, yeah, the whole babies thing. I, yeah, this is. This is just really creepy, um, but Justin loves it, and I'm sad he's not here to talk about it. This is, and I still say this, this is at the upper echelon of comic books. This is a lesser issue of this book for me, I would say, mostly because, and maybe this is my personal thing, but I think they've done a really good job of bringing out the idea of conspiracy theories and relying a little more on Martin Simmons' art here to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, they've tried different styles, different ways of telling these stories. Here, it's it leads into this character who is an old grizzled man who talks about all the stories and ways that he's experienced this stuff. So it fits the character, but it's a lot more on the text. So reading it, it felt more like, oh, this guy's just ranting at me about conspiracy yeah. theories, yeah, yeah. which took me out of it a little bit. So... Still very smartly written, still very scary, really well done, great book, um, but not my absolute favorite issue of it. 
Okay. Next up, Reptile number one from Marvel, written by Terry Blass, art by Enid Balam. This is a new, I, I would say, all ages book, right? Yeah. yeah uh, spinning good. out of the Spider Man King in Black special, I believe, surprisingly enough, though it has nothing to do with Venomy stuff. This is about the former Avengers Academy member who can turn into any dinosaur and how he is wrestling with his powers. He feels very nervous to use them. Uh, tackles a new villain who has some revelations about his powers. I thought this was very fun. Yeah, I uh, art's great. Um, like the kid, uh, it's a character you can get behind right away and kind of get into it. It's adorable in all the right ways. Um, and then, you know, just kind of like classic uh, thing to kind of get the hero to kind of go down a different path is just like... I, hey kid, I can tell you answers. Uh, I can I can tell you about your parents. Uh, you know, I'll tell you about that crystal you got in your chest. You know, so like very kind of intriguing, and uh, uh, I think it leaves it in a good place. If you could turn into any dinosaur, Pete, which one would you turn into? Uh, I probably have to go with pterodactyl on that one. Uh, that's the correct answer. Oh, okay. Because you can fly, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, I tricked you. They're technically birds. They're not dinosaurs at all. Well, sorry, buddy. I'm, I'm turning into that dinosaur bird. Because <laughs> birds are dinosaurs. I would turn into the baby dinosaur from dinosaurs and just constantly say, "Not the mama." Mm-hmm. That was Ugh, a bad. Things that was awful. Really bad. That was, uh, I don't not know the why. mama. Yeah. Batman Superman number 18 from DC Comics, written by Gene Lunyang, art by Ivan Rice and Jose Luis. We are continuing the story here about a archivist evil archive robot cyborgy type thing who has been messing with different timelines we're seeing alternate history batman and superman right out of a film serial we get a very weird revelation at the end here i really like this story a lot this is fun and weird and different and i'm really enjoying it pete yeah i mean uh, i'm glad it's very stylized it's fun to see the kind of old-timey versions of the characters and stuff like that but the film panels thing, uh, it just pulled me out of it in the beginning, made it this a little bit of a, uh, a tough one for me. But I can definitely see why a lot of people would love it. And uh, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. See, this is, Pete, you were born in, what was it, uh, 20, 2005, right? So you you didn't live through film. You're more of like a digital media, maybe DVD type guy. If you check out Pete's TikTok channel, he has a lot of stuff about not caring about film. He's always pointing and being like, film? No film. Oh, no thanks. Guess. Do not like. Yeah, I did a lot of stuff on film back in the day, okay? Uh, you know, I went to school, uh, took film classes. Oh, so it film brings you back. Over, it's uh, traumatic. Exposed things, underexposed mm -hmm. things. Uh, taped film together and the whole thing came undone in the middle of the screening of it. Yeah, you know, it's a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> like a right? cartoon? Yeah. 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 Blah, 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 blah. yeah, that's exactly what happens, yeah. Oh, man. That's great. Made in Korea, number one from Image Comics, written by Jeremy Holt, Ron Chan. Art by George Shaw and Ron Chan. I really like this book a lot. This felt... A lot like a Luna Brothers book to me, though not by the Luna Brothers. What, Pete? I, I uh, you know, it's just like even when we don't have Justin, Justin's here. You know what I mean? Like we can't. <laughs> he loves to bring up the Luna Brothers. I well, think... but this feels like it because this is a sci-fi story set in the not too far future, where people uh, have proxies who are little robots who live with them, um, and when they can't have kids, they get these little robots. Um, to join their families. We get to see a little bit of this world here. And the reason I bring up the Luna Brothers is because what they do with a lot of their stuff is this accessible near future sci-fi that doesn't feel too far from reality. It's not 30,000 years of the future. It's like 20 years of the future. Uh, and that's you think kind of... 20, 20 years, there'll be little robot people? Sure, why not? You can't tell that are robots? Yes. Speaking as a futurist, I would say yes, 100%, definitely. Oh my God, that freaks me out. <laughs> but I really like this. I like the story. I like the art. I thought it was interesting. The main characters were fascinating. Um, it sets up this conspiracy element that I think we're going to follow. What? You weren't into this at all, Pete? Well, first off... Uh, you don't cool, like film. You don't like robots. What is it, Pete? Cool Shoot. art. Uh -huh. Great idea. You know, uh, love the title. Amazing cover. Fantastic. 
Love but the title. I don't. What it is? It's a great title. Sure. It's an amazing cover. Cover. It's very powerful. It's it's what you want to like get someone to pick it up off the shelf and be like, what is this? But you know, this is another thing that's like, hey, don't pay attention to those Terminator movies. Make machines. We won't kill all you humans. Well, I don't think that's what it's about. It's not about robots going evil. I'm not saying it's evil. not about that, but I'm saying this is a thing that gets people cool with that idea. And I feel like if we go oh, you down think that road, this is Terminator propaganda? Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a crazy reason to not like this book. <laughs> The Other History of the DC Universe, number four from DC Comics, written by John Ridley, art by Giuseppe Comincoli. In this issue, we are focusing on Rene Montoya. Yes, one of my favorites. new question. Yeah, you know, this made me realize one of the things about this book, even though I appreciate every issue of it, is if I know the history of the character a little better, I definitely hook into it more. Yeah. And here, I know Rene Montoya more, so I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I know yeah. what they're talking about. Um but even barring that, the layouts are great. The way that John Ridley is taking these expansive, insanely complicated, impossible to reconcile histories of these characters and making them work, particularly for thematic outsider reasons. In this case, uh, Renee Rontoya is a lesbian and she is grappling with that throughout the book, which is something which was in her history. Um, really well done. Yeah, it's just powerful storytelling really great use of text and art kind of in this still kind of powerful uh, uh, stuff and i just was uh i continue to kind of be blown away uh, uh by this and i'm so glad dc is doing this it's such a great series definitely a must kind of check out and pick up Absolutely. Next up, let's talk about Beta Ray Bill number three from Marvel by Daniel yeah! Warren Johnson. Pete, you want to take it away with this one? Sure. Uh, first off, um, just just absolutely breathtaking. I mean, the paneling and the, the designs and all the action and the flamethrowers and the giant machine gun turrets and uh, a chip that then turns into a submarine. I mean, this is just like such uh, great stuff and then two old friends catching up during a game of pong and then like can you imagine like how touching it would be if alex you and me had a, a game of pong and then afterwards you gave me a giant axe that was also part of you i mean that's just moving powerful stuff i just uh yeah and then you know you get a lot of just over the top action with all of this moving stuff he does a great job of balancing heart and action and over the top nonsense with some real stuff in there. And I just, uh, I eat it, I eat it up and it's so enjoyable. And the cliffhanger was really fun. I, I just can't get enough. This book is really good. You're absolutely right. Like you said, Daniel Warren Johnson's art is amazing. The story is great. It builds so nicely. The cliffhanger at the end is very exciting as well. And I love the under emotional underpinning of Beta Ray Bill's ship being in love with him. And I'm just yeah, uh, picking up on it. Oh, I'm so worried about it because Beta Ray Bill kind of like hates his appearance and like wants to get back to his human form. But here's his ship like pronouncing his love for him and like. Oh, don't do that to the ship, man. You know what yeah. I mean? And, oh, I'm worried that Beta Ray Bill is going to blow this. So good. Uh, but I'll tell you what. Do you know what is better than Beta Ray Bill? What's that? Be better shaved balls. <laughs> better. <laughs> Instead of Beta Ray Bill, it's better shaved balls. <laughs> right? Wow. I just, uh, I don't know what to say to you. Because this week's episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com and the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer now available for purchase in the USA and Canada, but not, not in Nidlevar. No. Unfortunately, it's not there not, yet. Not yet. You also can't get it in Jotunheim or Muspelheim. But in Muspelheim, I don't think you need it because uh, it's made of fire and it would just singe since oh you, you know oh my god what is happening are you losing your own hammer in a tangle thicker than yggdrasil the world tree then try the lawnmower <laughs> 4.0 which has a ceramic blade 
Skin safe technology, a 4000K LED spotlight, different guard legs to customize your trim, and it's waterproof in case you're Namor the Submariner. I feel like you're uh, mixing your comic book references there a little bit. Maybe I am, but it's all part of the same universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But we're talking about the Manscaped Cinematic Universe today. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code FANSIDED20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code FANSIDED20. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Yeah, uh, that's our... That's our, that might be our last Manscaped read. So I just wanted to say like, you know, uh, I did trust my balls with this product and I feel good about it. Yeah. And uh, Zalvin did not. <laughs> Thanks for selling me down the river right at the well, end Well, for some reason you have like old rickety balls that you don't trust uh, anything going near. They squeak as I walk. I, I can't, <laughs> it's not something I can help. Oh man. Uh, yeah, Wait, can you hear them? I'm... They're actually saying something right now. Well, sometimes... I can. I, I can. That's weird. My balls just... Sometimes I'm like, wait, is there an old ship nearby? Oh, no, that's <laughs> Zalbin's balls. Have you ever heard of the ship of Theseus? Oh, my God. Now, if you took the ship of Theseus and you shaved it down over time and then replaced... What is happening? I'm not sure. Strange Adventures, number 10 from DC Woo-hoo! Comics, written by Tom King, art by Mitch Gerards and Evan Doc Shaner. This is a big issue of this title very huge because we finally get some answers here about exactly what has been going on with adam strange and with the enemy the picts who have been invading earth pete i know you get a little bit frustrated with tom king books when you don't get answers how do you feel now that we're getting answers here i mean that's exciting because i've been lost for 10 issues I still feel a little dazed and confused about everything, but uh, I'm I'm excited to get some kind of truth to what's happening. Still a absolutely beautiful book. I like the way that things have twisted and turned here. I feel like I say this all the time with Tom King stuff, but this is one that I'll be excited to go back and read again, particularly with the revelations that happen in this issue. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but very well done, very well plotted. And like I said, gorgeous art. Next up, Alien number three from Marvel, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, art by Salvador LaRocca. In this issue, our main characters are still on a space station fighting some aliens, some xenomorphs. We're getting a flashback to the first time this happened with our main army dude character. Man, this is so great. It's so scary. It's so tense. The alien action is so good. And the teases that we're going to get something that is really redefining alien mythology here is very exciting. Pete, the, what'd you think? Yeah, the last page reveal was 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 intense. Um, yeah, I mean, this uh, first off, the aliens look great, um, and the kind of like action and and stuff was a lot of fun. Um, I recently rewatched Aliens, so it was kind of fun to kind of uh, read this after that. Um, and you want to talk about some weird deer? You can get some weird deer in here. Mm. I always want to talk about some weird deer. Yeah. There you go. Great book. Definitely pick it up. Shadecraft number three from Image Comics, written by Joe Henderson, art by Lee Garbett. In this issue, our main character is continuing to discover more about her new powers to control and take down shadows. Uh, we have some twists and turns here involving the main characters as well. I like this book more every issue. I think it was very evocative with the art in the first issue or two, but now that we're getting to the plot, it's a lot of fun. I like this character. I like these powers. I'm excited to explore more of this world. Yeah, I completely agreed. It's nice to see the kind of get the character up to speed on using her powers a little bit. So she's not just kind of running from her shadow, but I think that like also a great kind of last page reveal I don't know if you want to give it away or not, but, uh, you know, I also had an awkward conversation with, with, uh, you know, a parental figure and found out somebody wasn't my brother. So it was tough. Wait, what? Really? No. Oh, okay. Sometimes you confess stuff like that on our show. So I just don't know anymore. Next up, <laughs> Stargirl Spring Break Special Number 1 from DC Comics, written by Jeff Johns and Breck Bassinger, the star of the Stargirl series, art by Todd Nock, and Brian Hitch, and Fred Hembeck, of all people. This 
is, uh, as you can probably tell, a bunch of different stories about Stargirl. The main one is resetting her in the DC Universe and very lightly tying her to the way that she is on TV before setting up the new Stargirl series. We get some of the Seven Soldiers of Victory. We get Clock King. We get Per Dagaton here, one of Jeff John's favorite villains when it comes to the JSA. I had a lot of fun reading this. It was nice to see this team back together. What'd you think, Pete? Yeah, I was a little worried about the title, but I really liked uh, a, a lot of the stories in here. Uh, I miss Stargirl, um, uh, miss the TV show, and I'm excited to, uh, you know, it was nice to get some Stargirl in comic book form here. I agree, and kudos to Stargirl star Breck Bassinger on writing a bunch of uh, notes for Stargirl. Excuse notes. It was very fun, yeah. uh, and it was fun seeing Fred Hembeck, too. I always love that guy. Next up, Something is Killing the Children, number 16 from Boom oh, Studios, wow. written by James Tyne of the Fourth, art by oh, Werther Del Daria. After finishing the first big arc of this book, we are zooming back in time and getting the origin of our main character. 16 Echo. issues, and now we get the origin story. Unbelievable, st- uh, unbelievable writing to be able to get away with that and have mm-hmm. it not be weird. Um, I, I love this issue. Absolutely love this issue. It, so what did you like about it in particular, Pete? Um, well, first off, it was, um, you know, you kind of get this gruff character and you don't know what her deal is. There are times where she shows like a heart of gold and sometimes she's cold as ice. So it was nice to kind of see a little bit of how she kind of came into this world and maybe why she is the way that she is. And I feel like they did it in a way that wasn't too tropey and wasn't too... Uh, I, I thought it just worked really well with the character and kind of gave the reader a new kind of appreciation for her moving forward. I agree. Uh, just really good stuff. And like you're saying, it's very dark, very cold, but interesting. We meet some new characters here that I'm really fascinated to follow. Uh, it's very bold. Yeah. I mean, honestly, in a weird way, this makes me excited for the third arc of whatever it is, because we got this enormous 15 issue arc. Uh, to introduce the premise. Now we're getting the origin. What's going to happen next? What is the information we need here that we're going to get going forward? Very exciting. Next up, Robin number two from DC Comics, written by Joshua Williamson, art by Gleb Melnikov. This is picking up on one of the bolder cliffhangers we've seen in recent memory, where the first issue ended with Robin, Damian Wayne, on a Mortal Kombat-style island. His heart got ripped out. He died. Surprise, probably not a big surprise, but surprise, he uh, comes back to life. It's Lazarus yeah, Island. Know, yeah, it's Lazarus Island. It's right there in the name. Yeah, but in video game style, everybody in this Mortal Kombat style tournament gets three lives. They can leave at any point, but if they hit the third life, their soul is taken forever. Unless they know the Contra code. Unless and they then, know the... Yeah, you get Does that guy. work in Mortal Kombat? No. no, no. I wish it did. Very fun premise. Really like this video game style thing that's going on here. The uh, characters are fun. I liked the almost anti-cliffhanger that happens at the end of the issue. I know you're very anti damian Wayne, Pete, but what did you think about this? No, I love this, Robin. This is great. Love the first issue. Second issue, really fantastic. I like the kind of character voice that Robin is doing. I think it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, yeah, I'm have I think this is like a great kind of place for this character to kind of like learn and grow on this island. So I'm, I'm excited for it. I think this is, uh, this is a great idea and I'm glad DC is doing it. Next up, ha ha, number five from Image Comics written by W. Maxwell Prince, art by Gabriel Hernandez Walta. I feel like it's more like ha ha. Ha ha. No, no, it's not. It's not from the Simpsons. Maybe it's, it's not- like the... <laughs> The Joker laugh that Jared Leto does in the Snyder Cut, where it's, uh, oh, God. Uh, yeah, where it's like they took him laughing and played it backwards or something. I don't like it. Not even in a ooh, I feel uncomfortable way. Just I don't like it. But I do like this book a lot, and I like this issue a lot what? too. Yes. The art is stunning in here throughout from Gabriel Walta. This is about an old lady who used to be a clown is holding on to her makeup, holding on to the old times. There's a young boy who is challenged to steal something from her house. And it ends up in a very sweet and poignant way by the end, which I was very surprised by. Very surprised by. I thought for sure that old lady was going to cook that kid and eat him. I thought that too. But uh, spoiler, she doesn't. 
Yeah, it's yeah. uh this yeah, this book continue that's the fun of it is you don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh you really don't. They have such it's such a it has a tone, an eerie tone to it. Um yeah, yeah, this is it continues to be a very kind of impressive uh, uh comic this haha kind of sp- spin off of the Ice Cream Man. Yeah, I'm also very interested to see the next issue because it is the Ice Cream Man team on it, so Kind of fascinating to see what they lead into there, but this is very good. And they're all one shots. There's no continuing plot to follow or anything like that. So you can pick up any issue and jump right in. And this is a really good one to check out. Next up, Harley Quinn, number three, another clown from DC Comics, written by Stephanie Phillips, art by Riley Rosmo. In this issue, Harley is trying to set up a support group for Victim of the Joker. Doesn't go very well because of Hugo Strange, who has his own missions going on in Gotham City. I continue to really like this book. It's a lot of fun. Riley Rosmo's art is great, as always. But it's just an enjoyable, very different Harley than we've seen in a long time. Um, I like it quite a bit. Pete? Yeah, that's the nice thing about when you make like a real different art choice um, to the character. You can kind of see a different side of them. And uh, and it still feels like the character. It still feels like the, the the world. And Hugo Strange in this is so creepy in all the right ways. Um, yeah, I I this continues to just be fantastic. I, I I'm very much enjoying this, and the art is leading the way. Next up, one I'm very curious to get your feedback on because I feel like we're going to disagree on it just on basic principles, but we'll see what happens. The Goddamn The Virgin Brides, number five from Image Comics, written by Jason Aaron, art by R.M. Guerra. This is finishing up the run of this miniseries following two characters. Uh, In case you don't know generally about the book, it's set in biblical times which is historical. And these uh, two girls have been trying to escape a mountain where a bunch of women have been sending them up to essentially be raped by angels and impregnated Ugh. with Nephilim. Uh, they have rebelled against them. They failed. Uh, spoiler, but things go crazy out of control in this issue. I thought, uh, overall, I thought this miniseries was incredible. Uh, Aaron Garris' art is incredible in the landscapes, the characters that he draws, the way that he finds beauty and ugliness a lot of times, particularly in this horrific Bible world that Jason Aaron and he have built, uh, is kind of amazing. The story and the twists and turns that it went on over the course of it were great. And without spoiling it, the end of the issue got me so pumped and so excited. I did not see it coming, but very excited to see wherever this title goes next. Pete, what did you think? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, <laughs> there's some things that are like, hey, and just to frame it up, this is the most important book in my life. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, some things. If you just... say anything negative about this book, it will crush my fragile self esteem. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. First off, I'm sorry, Alex. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't do well with this kind of thing where it, um, it's just uh, a lot of nudity and then, um, yeah, I, some of the religion kind of, the, uh, yeah. It's it is. It's I, I, we talked about this before, it's, but it is crazy tough. to me not to keep getting back to the ad that we've been doing. But it's crazy to me that you're like, did you guys shave your balls yet with this manscape that I got? It felt great when I shaved it. It was great. It's great for sex is what you basically said. And then we get to this comic and you're like, oh, I can't talk about this imaginary thing. Well, first off, um, you know, there's a difference between uh, ball shaving and. And then virgins being raped by angels. So, you know what I mean? You like, bring up a very good point. There so is, they are different. I, yes, they are. And I, you know, uh, I could, you know, joke about balls. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I, you know, I, that kind of stuff, it just doesn't work for me. But uh, there was some real touching moments here with the character. The art um, is grotesque in all the right ways and is gets you in the feels for sure but it's impressive but it's just uh not my kind of cup of tea so i tip my hat to how uh impressive it is and the story that is told 
Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, this is just not in my wheelhouse. So apologies. <laughs> That's all right. Next up, Action Comics number 1031 from DC Comics, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, Becky Cloonan, and Michael W. Conrad. Art by Daniel Semper and Mike Oming. The front story is about Superman and his son. The back story is about Midnighter. Pete, you've been a little back and forth about this run, I think. What did you think about this one? Love this. I mean, this was like a lot of things happening in here, a lot of things coming ahead. Love the action. Um, kind of Superman dealing with uh, everything that's going on. I'm kind of glad we got to a lot of that. Um, and the it's just the art and the action is just fantastic. Very moving, very cool stuff. And then also the Midnighter. I love the kind of different character design and the kind of fun uh, lines that Midnighter gets to have in this. Um, I think there was like one line where it's like, um, oh... Oh, no, I was talking about the, oh, I'm sorry, I wrote down the line that Superman said that was, like, really amazing in the in the blinding light uh, uh, as, like, this kind of person is seeing, uh, like, a form come into frame, and it's Superman, and it was like, my name is Clark, and no more harm will come to you. I was like, holy shit, that was really powerful. I really love that panel. Uh, but, yeah, and also the Midnighter stuff, a lot of kind of badass uh, great lines in there as well. Good stuff. And last but not least, Ascender number 15 from Image Comics, written by Jeff Lemire, art by Dustin Wynn. This is a huge issue of this book, not for page yeah. length, because it feels like it goes by in a second, but it just in terms of the mythology of what they've been doing with Descender and then Ascender here. So many things are revealed through the reemergence of Tim 21, I believe is the character. And man it, it's good it's worth the wait it makes so much sense it brings together everything they've been doing in both of these series i'm very excited to see what happens after this yes i agree i'm excited to see what happens after this this was a little bit of like for me anyway first off both the a center and d center amazing unbelievable art storytelling this issue for me was a little bit of a letdown because it was like, hey, here's everything coming together a little bit for you. In case you, you know, hey, here's some people talking and recapping some things that happened. Uh, so that part for me was a little like, mm, but uh, really love where it ended and where we're going should be very interesting. I agree. If you'd like to support this podcast, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at sure 7 do. to Crowdcast and YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to chat with you about comics. iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe, listen, and follow the show at Comic Book Live on Twitter, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and more. Until next time, good night. 